Negativity has been in the media ever since there's been media, yet people still love the media despite the negativity, and they use it in their everyday lives. And why, you might ask? Because negativity isn't just in the media. It is the media. There are so many negative effects of media. Drugs, violence, sex, etc. can influence teens to become engaged in those same types of dangerous activities. And instead of playing outside reading books or hanging out with their friends doing productive things, children spend their time in the house watching television, playing video games, and surfing the web on the computer. Also, studies over the last 30 years at the National Institutes of Health and at Yale University show a strong connection between media and child obesity, tobacco use, and early sexual behavior. These are just a few of the negative aspects of media, so now I'm going to list most or all of them. The negative effects of media, especially on children and teens, include the imitation of celebrities' lifestyles, the receiving the wrong message, uh, nightmares and thoughts of violence or rape or other negative occurrences, obesity and other eating disorders, distraction from reality, addiction, hating oneself in terms of body image, having a negative outlook on life, and confusion between right and wrong decisions. So clearly there are a lot of negative things in the different types of media. In this video, I'm going to be mentioning several different types of media, but really focusing on a few of them. I'm going to mention the internet, movies, and television, but I'm really going to focus on the news, music, and video games. So how about we begin? First, there's the internet, which is very popular among the public. Because of the internet, children are learning things that they shouldn't until they are fully mature. And the people believe everything they see or hear on the internet, which affects their way of thinking and their judgment. Bill Gates is, no, was the first president of the United States. That's what it says here. But it's on the internet, you have to believe it, right? Then there are movies, which are also very popular among society. The way supermodels or actors and actresses dress and look can actually influence teens to change the way they look through methods such as unhealthy weight loss, changing their hair color, etc., which makes them lose what makes them different and unique from other people. Also, younger people, because they idolize celebrities and because it's mostly celebrities' failures and bad decisions that are shown to the public, uh, children will want to imitate the celebrities' lifestyles and will want to make the bad, same bad decisions that they make. I bet you if I chugged this whole thing of protein right here, I would totally look like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was on steroids. Television is very similar to movies in terms of negativity, but it's also negative in its own way. Watching a television show can greatly affect your emotions. It can make you happy, sad, infuriated, etc., depending on the scene of the show you are watching. Also, although they do not occur as much as they used to, subliminal messages are, and definitely were, in television shows. They are hidden messages, especially in advertisements, that can influence the psychology and thinking of consumers and make them want to buy specific products. OxyClean laundry stain remover. That's true. I don't know why, but for some reason I feel like buying some OxyClean. Now it's time for the big three. News, music, and video games. So how about we turn on the TV and see what's on the news? The news is very popular among society, mainly adults, but it's also popular among children and teens. So watching negative news can really impact your life. If you're watching a news story about a plane crash, it could lead to a fear of flying. And if you're watching a story about economic problems, it could lead to a fear of uh, spending too much and losing your job. Then there is the negativity bias, which has been proven true by specific studies. Uh, the negativity, negativity bias states that 
More information is processed when you're viewing negative news, such as a soldier being killed in battle, versus positive news, such as people helping in Haiti, meaning that you're much more likely to remember and be affected by negative news stories. There is also the social learning theory, which states that people learn through their interactions and observations with people, objects, and the environment, meaning that fear from the news could spread throughout society. Uh, racial stereotypes are also created by watching certain terrible events on the news. So here are two examples. The Pearl Harbor was bombed in 1941, and it resulted in discrimination against Asian Americans. And the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center led to discrimination against Arab Americans. And the U.S. believed that all Muslims and Iraqis were suicide bombers or terrorists, and so we killed millions of innocent Iraqi civilians. Everything we have to fear is fear itself. You said it, FDR. Fear from the news is really what's making us afraid, not of the actual events. Unless they are personal events or events that happen near you. I actually decided to take matters into my own hands and interview an artist to discuss the negativity in music. So with me here, I have a very famous gangster rapper. You may recognize him, but that's not important. So, thanks for joining me again. My pleasure, man. You are welcome in here anytime. So over the years, music has really been attacked for having a lot of negativity in it. But I believe the most attacked genre of music is gangster rap. Because people have been saying that it depicts violent sex and drugs as like cool and normal things to do. And they believe that children who listen to the music may be influenced to undergo those same actions. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, luck. Like, I can partially see where they're coming from. You know what I'm saying, G? Because that's all gangster rap is. You know, with country music, you got talking about sex and booze. But you don't hear about talking about killing people. And in death mail, you hear about mass destruction and killing everybody, but you don't hear about, like, having sex with people. Whereas gangster rap, you got everything right there. Violence, sex, drugs, all that bad stuff in one package. And I think that's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's because sex and drugs only sell. That's People only like gangster rap for the stuff that's in it, and that's probably not going to change. Okay, uh, do you believe that it, it's just a coincidence that it only happens to... A certain amount of people that only a certain amount of people are influenced to do these kind of things or do you think that can happen to anyone i honestly think that it really could happen to anyone man because 1992 a man named ronald howard i think you may have heard about this in texas he was actually driving a police officer came at him he shot him with a glock pistol which was actually the same pistol he that he was heard in the tupac song he was listening to while driving man i don't think it's coincidence i honestly think that tupac had part in that. I think like any gangster rapper like Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Ice-T, all of those guys from back then and even people now like Chief Keef, 2 Chainz, Lil Wayne, they're all, they're all bad men, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. There's just, I think that it could happen to anyone. It's just not a coincidence, man. Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, what do you think needs to be done to prevent this uh, issue from continuing on in this society? Well, actually, something was almost done. Uh, you know, Master P? Yeah, he was uh, doing a non-violence campaign, you know, that kind of stuff. He was trying to get us gangster rappers not to put any of that stuff in our music. You know what I'm saying, dog? Yeah, but it, not, none of that ever happened. It's still the same way it's always been, man, and nothing's ever going to change that. Honestly, something should, but I honestly don't think that anything's going to happen, dude. Okay, well, thanks again, and I hope to see you again sometime for an interview. Well, th thank you for coming here and inspiring me to talk about this, dude. Peace out. Let's look at one of the most attacked types of media, video games. So I decided to go to a local home and actually ask a kid who played video games to see what he thought about the negativity in the games. You playing Halo 2? Yeah, man, it's a pretty fun game. How old are you? I'm 14, what's your point? You do realize this game is rated M, right? They created the ESRB rating for a reason, so kids like you wouldn't play games like this. So? You can't do anything about it. Maybe he can't do anything about it, but I certainly can. Now get lost! Dude, what's your problem, man? Oh! Oh, hey Senator Jack Thompson. You mind if I interview you while you're here?
Yeah, sure, I got a few minutes. Here, let's sit down. So you're basically against all video games, is that correct? Yes, I suppose you could say that. Okay, so why is that? Well, it's just the fact that, like, any, any person, any person who plays these video games can really be negatively affected. I have some research with me here to prove that. Um, a study was done at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, and it proved that for men ages 18 to 21, playing violent and suggestive video games like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, uh, Halo, um, they can lead to a lot of negative activities, especially abusing alcohol and drugs. Um, there were actually a group of men who played Grand Theft Auto and games like that. They showed abnormal blood pressure, uncooperative behavior, temptations for violence, alcohol and drugs, especially marijuana, unusual sexual activity, and the incorrect processing of information. So, you know, it's, this is, it's why I'm just against it, because all these things can happen. Okay, okay, I, I understand the facts, but do you think that only a few gamers would be influenced like this, or do you think that could happen to any gamer anywhere? Oh, it can happen to anyone, any age group, anywhere in the world, playing any type of video game, doesn't matter. They can all be negatively affected. So, like, negative effects like violence, uh, they might want to be isolated, they'd have confusion between reality and fantasy, uh, a worse academic performance, uh, seizures, postural disorders, uh, bad language, addiction, uh, attention problems, and unpredictable behavior. Anyone can be affected by this, and it's, it's happening everywhere, and it's, anyone can be affected. It's not just a coincidence. Anyone can be affected. Okay, and um, what do you think needs to be done to prevent this situation from continuing on? Well, something was almost done, and I, too bad it didn't happen, because I would be all for it. There was a bill in Michigan uh, that was going to ban the, sal the sale of video games to minors. This was also going to happen in like California, Illinois, and Washington. But there was this judge, God, this uh, judge from Michigan, uh, George Karim Stee, I think that's how you say his name. He declared the bill unconstitutional because the First Amendment protects it, if that makes any sense. So, this also happened in California, Illinois, and Washington. Don't know why it needs, it should have happened. I would have been all for it. And there's, there's proof for that. Um, also, there's studies done by the Entertainment Software Association, the ESA. The average age of a, game, a gamer is 30 years old. 87% of gamers under 18 get permission from their parents to buy or rent games. And 92% of children say the parents are present when purchasing the games. So really, this seems like it could be a positive thing. But when you look at it the opposite way, it really isn't because... That, that, that means that some kids could be purchasing really violent games without the parents even knowing. And then, you know, that's just bad parenting right there. And kids are just, it's, it's bad. Every, not just kids, you know, adults. Anyone could be affected by it. And, you know, it's happening everywhere. Something needs to be done. And I want to make that change. Okay, thank you for your time. You're welcome. I hope that we cross paths again sometime in the future. Here are some questions to ask yourself to reflect upon the video. What is your stance on the issue? What is your reasoning for your stance on this issue? And how should media be kept away from younger children? Well, that's all folks. That is negativity in the media. But before you go, just remember, don't get too immersed in negativity in the media. Because if you do, you'll end up like a negative person and nobody will want that.